My name's Andy. I am a self-confessed tech geek and uh, I love a bit of photography, so um, drones tick both of those boxes for me. So the subject of the, this video today is whether or not this um, Mavic Mini FCC hack actually works. Um, there's been a lot of debate online about it. Nobody's really done any proper tests, so as far as I'm concerned, a lot of what I'm seeing is anecdotal evidence and nothing really hard and reproducible. So for those of you who don't know what this FCC hack is, I'll go into a bit of detail about that. So. FCC versus C is all to do with the different regulations, how radio enabled products from key fobs to microwaves to phones to drones, how they are sold in, in the US and the European markets. Now these regulations are important in ensuring that all these different products brought to different markets remain compliant with their local regulations. In this case, it's radio equipment that meets power and frequency limits for those regions in order to um, avoid things like interference. So in the US we have the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, and in Europe we have CE, so that is the European Conformity System. And both of these are responsible for regulating radio equipment specifications and management. Very specifically in this case, both determine the maximum transmission power for devices operating within certain unlicensed spectrum. The DJI drones is your 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz frequency ranges. So to the limits then, the FCC in the US in relation to those frequency bands that are used by drones and Wi-Fi, they put a maximum transmission power of 1000 milliwatts or one watt uh, in terms of output. So devices transmitting on those frequencies are not allowed to project more than a one watt of power. In Europe, a lot, lot different. So in Europe, on 2.4 gigahertz transmission, we have a limit of 10 milliwatts, whilst at the 5.8 gigahertz range, um, that's limited to 25 milliwatts. Milliwatts aren't necessarily the best value to use here. We'll see DBMs used in a minute. Um, those are a better way to compare, and you'll also see from the specs, DBMs are used as well. But overall, these different transmission power limits are the main reason why there are different ranges between the FCC Mavic and the CE Mavic. So what about the hack itself? In simple terms, the way the hack works is by spoofing the location of your device. So before the Mavic Mini came along, DJI employed the use of variable power transmitters on its drones. One radio controller model and one drone model were manufactured and these were shipped globally and they used software to effectively make those devices compliant with local regulation. So if you look on the website you can see for example on the Mavic Pro that there is only one model and as we go down a little bit more we can see that it's also got all the transmission and power ranges for both regions but there is only one model. And the same is for DJI Mavic Air so you will see the specs, the power ranges and DBMs here as well but only one model. So the Mavic Mini was unique for a DJI drone in that we saw two physically different models, both for sale specifically into the separate FCC and CE markets. So this was new for the Mavic Mini and we can see this in the specs. So we have model MT1SS5, which was for the FCC market, and model MT1SD25 um, is the model for the CE market. Each has got different power ratings, as you can see in the specs. So we know that by using a GPS spoofing app, we could trick the older Mavic models to set themselves into FCC mode to get those high transmission power levels. But with two physically separate models for the DJI Mavic Mini, does the same GPS spoofing trick still work? So as I mentioned before, the debate about whether the hack actually works has been raging a bit on the internet since people first started to try to apply the, the hack with the Mini. Some have spotted certain app behavior changes and assumed incorrectly that the hack is working, whilst others are reporting slightly increased ranges on their Mini after running the spoofing hack. But what seems to be missing is an actual real test to see if the Mini really does generate more transmission power when the hack is applied. In the next part of this video, I'm gonna perform those tests so we can see once and for all if the hack actually does work or not. So on a fair test, I'm simply going to measure the BBM transmission output when the Mini is switched on and running as normal in default CE mode. And then I'm gonna repeat the same test again after applying the GPS spoofing hack. 
I'll be using a manual 5.8 GHz channel on both occasions to ensure that the main variables remain exactly the same between the two different tests. To measure the RF power output, I'll be using an immersion RC RF power meter in the version 2. Link in the description if you want to know more about that. These are great little devices primarily used in FPV quad setups to ensure your video transmission and your control transmission equipment is running correctly. So test one, we're going to fire up DJI, fly in normal mode, connect manually to a 5.8 gigahertz channel and then switch on the power meter to see what outputs we're getting and we'll run that for around about a minute and then we'll repeat the whole thing again with the hack working. So you can see here I'm flicking in, I'm going to turn on to the manual channel. 5.8 gigahertz on channel 149, which equates to 5750 gigahertz on the 5.8 frequency range. So I'll turn on the RF meter. And we should start to see readings uh, coming through there. So we're pretty much close to what we were expecting from the specifications, so we're, we're hovering between 15 and 16. The specs say about 14. Uh, this isn't an exact science because the meter isn't plugged straight into the antenna, um, so we're getting a bit of a gain probably off the antennas given, given us this reading at the moment. But we'll run that for a little while and we'll take the highest value we see from that, and then we'll reset everything and start again. So test two, I launched my fake GPS app, set myself in California, and when I launch DJI Fly, it should pick up the false GPS readings and automatically change the Wi-Fi settings based on my new US region. So you can see on the screen that dialog box is specifically flagging these new settings need to be applied. I'll turn on the RF power monitor to start monitoring the signal now. So if I go into the transmission settings in the app, and we'll take a look again at the 5.8 gigahertz range, and we can see two things here. So one, we'll be able to see that we're still on channel 149, which will set us manually, but also channels 12 and 13 are missing, which is exactly what we'd expect under FCC, as those channels are not allowed under the 2.4 gigahertz range. And as you can see now, we've got the RF power meter running again. So we will sit and watch this for about a minute and see what max power ratings we should get from this. Now it's worth remembering that for the FCC version of the Mavic, we'd be expecting around 30 dBm. At the moment, we're seeing it slightly lower than before. This could just be due to slight differences in distance between the two antennas. We're getting nowhere near, at the moment, 30 dBm. So the results were in, we've run two separate tests, one without the FCC hack applied and one with, and on both occasions we've monitored the actual RF power being transmitted. So what did we find? 16.59 dBm max reading without any FCC fake GPS hack applied, and just 12.41 dBm reading with the FCC hack applied. So there it is, the FCC hack on a CE version of the Mavic doesn't work. You get no additional transmit power, so additional range is not possible just using this method. That's not to say signal boosters, range extenders, parabolic antenna don't help. What I would say, however, is that we do see some behavioral changes between when the hack is applied and when it isn't. With the hack running using a fake GPS location, DJI correctly drops channels 12 and 13 on the 2.4 gigahertz band when the app thinks the Mini is located in the US. And this is what we'd expect, as both these channels are not publicly usable in the US. Additionally, I wouldn't have necessarily expected to see a DBM drop when using the FCC mode. However, I simply put this down to a slight difference in distance between the antenna of the RC and the power meter during the tests, 
much in the same way that we saw DBM above the specified limit on the first test without FCC hack applied. One thing we cannot dispute though is that we didn't see the DBM readings heading anywhere near 30 DBM values which would be in the range of the FCC version of the Mini. So I think we can safely say that the CE version of the Mavic Mini has transmission power physically limited in hardware and not controllable by software. One last thought. I expect the FCC version of the Mini will have some kind of variable transmission power so it's able to remain compliant with local regulations when in use outside the FCC regions. So if we ran a reverse of this test on an FCC Mini, I'd expect we'd see a power drop when located in Europe on those 5.8 GHz channels in order to remain compliant. This raises a final question to leave you all with. Does this mean that you could FCC hack an FCC Mini flying in Europe into thinking it was actually in the US, which would make available 5.8 GHz at 1000 mW, 1 Watt, 30 dBm. By the way, this would be illegal in Europe. So that's it from me. I've never really done a video like this before. It's much longer than I anticipated, but I hope for those who watched the whole video, you found it informative and helpful. And for those who skipped to the tests, that you also found the results interesting. I guess if there's one thing I can take from COVID-19, it is learning a few new tricks on Premiere Pro and uh, Audition. So thanks for watching. Please post any questions in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Stay safe, stay home, and I'll see you on the other side. I'm not afraid of the dark.